in the previous lecture we discussed the quantization of conductance in ballistic constrictions or ballistic one dimensional conductor in this lecture we will look into the mechanism or the, the physics or the mathematics of how the under what conditions and what are the details of this quantized conductance through the system okay so we will discuss the mathematical formalism which is called the Landauer vertical formalism we will look into how to get the current from the transmission and eventually the quantization of conductance in these systems and we also will discuss a close connection between the quantization of conductance in the constriction and also that of the quantum Hall effect that we discussed in the previous module one of the previous modules okay now the Landauer formalism or Landauer vertical formalism considers the system as something like a black box with certain transmission coefficient Tk which is decided by the scattering in this in that regime in the box so you have something like a scattering center and uh, with the transmission probability of transmission coefficient tk and you have applied a small bias ev across the system where mu l is the electrochemical potential on the left side and mu r on the right side and u l and u r are the band edges conduction band edges on the source and the drain side and the transport is going from left to right but you also have right to left transport too okay the predominant transport in this case will be from left to the right but you need to consider both transport in the both in both directions for a complete picture okay so let's write down the expression for current okay in this case from left electrode to right electrode what we have is i l into 2 e that 2 stands for the uh, spin degeneracy e is the electronic charge which multiplies this particle current into the electrical current the integral here has few terms inside but dk by 2 pi tells you what is how many number of states are there 1 by 2 pi is your number density okay in this dk window how many states are there vk is the um, the group velocity for the state k tk is the transmission for the state k transmission coefficient for the state k and f is the fermi function for the left electrode so what is the occupation of the state what is the um, number number density what is, how many states are there in the channel and what velocity these states move and what is the transmission coefficient for these states so it is integrated over all the positive values of k because it's a one-dimensional transport and we are considering from left to the right okay when you consider right left you have to consider all the negative values or you put a negative sign okay that's what this formalism is now so far what we have discussed is in the k space but energy space is what we always work 
because voltage is a scaled form of energy. If you multiply voltage electrical charge, electronic charge, then you will get energy. So energy is what we actually we vary in the transport. Okay. So the dk integral over dk we need to convert in integral over de energy. Okay. So dk by d into de. So dk by de is basically 1 by h bar into v. V is the group velocity by this formula. Okay. H bar divided by de by dk is the group velocity. So let's substitute that here. So dk is 1 by h bar v into d. So this expression for the current from left to right, eventually you will get 2e by h integral ul infinity, where ul is the conduction band, okay, bottom, because that is where the number of, that is where the energy starts from, okay because you don't need to consider the whole zero to infinity here because the energy available starting energy available the starting energy is ul ul to infinity when you consider this side it will be ur to infinity okay ul to infinity then Fermi function then transmission probability for the state the energy e integral over d that's what you're going to get this is the current from left to right but there is a very interesting situation here, which happens only in this one dimensional situation. Because you had a term here in the case space, a group velocity term, and you also have a term which says what is the number density. Okay, you had two terms there. Okay, or the density of states. Both of them actually disappeared now when you took the integral when you re wrote the integral in the energy space because the group velocity vanished from the expression for current of conductance. That's what happened. That the reason is then the one dimensional density of states and the group velocity in 1D, the density of states and the group velocity cancel each other because group velocity V and the density of states also has a uh, and, and this uh, the integral over E actually has a new term, I mean that is the density of states. Okay. I also also has a beta that is the density of state. So you can conceptually what you can think is the states at higher energy moves faster because velocity is proportional to the square root of energy. Okay, because we are considering these are free particles, free electrons. Of course, they are confined also, but the wave is a plane wave. Okay, so the velocity is proportional to square root of e, and density of states is proportional to you know, one by square root of e because dE by dK is going to give you one by square root of e. Okay, so what what that is the cancellation happening here? The velocity of state and the residual state are kind of inversely proportional. So, but you can say that, but still the expression is same. Because when you have higher velocity, the states move faster, but there are less number of states. At lower velocity, there are more number of states. So both of them carry the same number of electrons or the current would be same. We have more states, but low less velocity, you have higher velocity states, but they are less in number. Okay, so these two terms effects will cancel each other so that the eventual expression for current will not have a velocity dependence and also density of state dependence. That's what we are seeing here. All of the states, all the states carry the similar 
same current. I mean, contributes similar. That is what we are seeing. So, similarly, the current from right to left is the integral over u r to infinity, similar format, but you can see a negative sign because those are left propagating states. Okay, current from right to left and current from left to right. So, that is what we have now. These are the expressions for the two contributions to the current. Now, the total current is the sum of these two terms and the integral for the left to right starts from ul and the right to left starts from ur. But remember, if you look at this energy diagram across the device, this states okay in this energy window does not contribute anything because there are no corresponding states available here okay so you do not need to worry about integrating the right hand side in this range u r you can start the integral for the right hand side also from u l because there are no states here to propagate okay you do not there is nothing it is a forbidden region okay because that is a band gap. So, you do not that is the bottom of the conduction band. U L is the bottom of the conduction band. Below that you do not need to worry. What that means is that gives us a convenience the, that these two integrals can be set from U L to infinity and that is what we have. So, the total current is 2 E by H U L to infinity then also, one more assumption we have made is the transmission coefficient is direction independent. So, Te is same whether you are going from right to left or left to right. Okay. So, when you factor all this in, the whole expression becomes 2e by h integral ul through infinity and the difference of the Fermi functions f of e mu l and f of e mu r, then the transmission coefficient integrated over energy from u l to infinity. Okay? But as you can see, this is not something like v uh, i is equal to v by r format. And this is not Ohm's law. Okay. All we can say is i is equal to 0 when v is equal to 0 because when v is equal to 0, mu l is equal to mu r and this difference of the two Fermi function will go to 0. So, the whole integral will be 0. So, that is the only thing we can say but definitely this is not going to give you this not Ohm's law. This is not in the form where you can directly get Ohm's law from this. Okay. The transport is actually different when you treat this way. Okay. Now, let us now look at the transport from this framework for different regimes, okay, for different cases. The first case is where you have very, very large bias, really large bias. So, when you have very large bias, you do not really need to worry about the states which actually propagating to the left side from the right side because when you have large bias, you can say that this there are no states here on the left side which are ready to receive the state electrons coming from the right side okay what that means is because there are two reasons number one there are no states here secondly most of the states are actually full because this is the bottom of the conduction band and 
the filling starts from the bottom. So the bottom side of the conduction bed is already full. So there are no vacant states here to receive the electrons from this side. So what I am saying here is you can ignore the contribution from the right side and you can say the total current is only that which goes to the left i equal to il il is a current which is going to the left that is fine okay now now when you have small bias okay then the fermi function can be expanded to lowest order this difference in the Fermi function you can write as Ev into df by d mu, okay, which is minus Ev into df e mu by de, okay. When you convert this mu into the voltage scale, in the energy scale, okay. So then you you accumulate this minus sign. Okay. Now the current is two e square v by h. Okay, because you have two e from here from the original expression. You have two e. Then you have e another e coming from here. Okay. So what you are going to have is 2e square v by h into integral ul over infinity df by de mu by de that is that comes from here okay and t is the transmission probability okay or transmittivity then the whole integral runs from ul to infinity de okay now what you can say is in this limit the current i is proportional to v rest of things are independent of v so i is proportional to v okay that is ohm's law so in really small bias range where you can expand the Fermi function like this in that limit the Ohm's law is going to hold in this situation okay because the conduction in that in that regime is proportional to the applied voltage because rest of the things are actually independent of voltage okay so in that limit Ohm's law is going to hold in the conduction and the conductance g is given by this 2 e square by h term and with a dimensionless quantity this thing is dimensionless because 2 e square by h has the dimension of conductance and this integral is dimensionless okay now this e square by h is the quantum limit of conductance and 2 here as we mentioned in the beginning it stands for it is for it represents the spin degeneracy because there are two spin channels okay now let's consider the next case where the system is at low temperature okay or what is the low temperature transport look like how, how does the low temperature transport look like now in the low temperature you don't have the fermi distribution in this previous case you have something like a fermi distribution you can consider on the lead but that is what I have tried here to represent by changing the color. Now here it is a step function, a clear step function. Okay. 
at low temperature. There is not much problem. Okay. What that means is there are all the states until mu L is full or there are no states on the left side vacant because it's a step function and all the states below mu L is full they are not ready to receive any electrons on the right side the all the states above mu L is empty similar case for the right electron also what that means is you need to consider only the current which is contributed in this window only from here the electron going from here to here that means i is to e by h bar mu r to mu l te into de okay because the fermi function is one in that region because it's full or zero for other side or okay, other direction so you need to consider only the transmission probability or transmission coefficient for those states through the channel or through the system so the current is simply given by the transmission coefficient of the states in the system between mu r and mu l now at very low temperature and very low energy window because at low temperature the Fermi function is very sharp okay and compared to any other feature okay so the states are there available only in a very thin window okay so df by de the derivative from a function is a step function because from a function is a sharp step sharp it's a very clear sharp step function so the derivative will, will be a delta function delta of e minus mu okay what that means is transport is going to take place only at the Fermi surface. Substituting this in this equation, which is what we have derived here, okay, you get 2 e square by h bar u l in infinity this function but this function is now a delta function which is, which has value only at mu so this is going to reduce to 2e by t mu but t mu is the transmission coefficient for that particular or transmission coefficient at mu okay and for ballistic transport as we have seen for the quantum point contact or atomic point contact each of these channel are reflectionless there are no scattering inside the channel or inside a device that means the transmission coefficient is one for every channel every channel is fully transmitted there is no reflection from that channel what that means is all the channel got the same conductance because conduct depends only on the transmission it does not depend on it does not depend on the dimension or any other parameter it doesn't look at how long the channel how wide the channel nothing it actually looks at what is the transmission coefficient for the channel and how many channels are there this is the total transmission coefficient for the device and multiplied by the conductance quantum okay and 2 is for the spin degeneracy here okay now in this 
context. Let us revisit the quantum point contact and also see how does that compare with the, the quantum Hall effect. Because there also you have conductance quantization. Here also you have conductance quantization. Here you have conductance quantization as a function of magnetic field. Here you that you got that as a gate voltage. Okay. And they both give you the same quantization or how they are related. Okay. Now that's what we are going to address. Now you have the formula for conductance here, which is 2e square by h into the transmission coefficient. Again, we are considering the transport at very low temperature okay, in the ballistic reflectionless regime, where T is equal to 1 for every channel. And there are no mixing between the channel. You also have to you know, consider that part here. That I want to mention that these channels are, in this case, these are the against states for the um, again states for the harmonic oscillator potential, or parabolic potential, they are Hermitian. In this case, again, they are the again states for harmonic oscillator potential. We are also, here also we have considered they are parabolic potential or simple harmonic motion. Okay. What that means, there are no mixing. That means every channel, it goes through and it doesn't reflect or it doesn't scatter to another channel. Okay. Yes, there is a streamlined flow of electron through each of these channels. Okay, and transmission is one for each of the channels. So now, when we vary gate voltage, you are reducing the number of channels or you are changing the number of channels one by one and you get a step in the conductance 2 e square by h. And if you have done this, with the magnetic field, you will get e square by h. Okay, so the conductivity e g is e square by h into n, where n is the number of channels. Here, this representative plot for quantum Hall effect, where you are plotting the R X the Hall resistance rho x y, which is also showing similar behavior, a step-like behavior in h by e square. If you plot conductance, you will get something similar to this in this case. But here, this is part of the resistance, resistivity, or rho x y. But here, every step is quantized. This, this, the, the, the resistance is quantized as h by e square into 1 by n, or the conductance is quantized e square by h into n. If you just invert this, you will get this. Okay. So here what happens is, when you vary the field, you are reducing the number of edge states one by one, but these edge states are perfect one-dimensional channels. They are actually a lot more perfect one-dimensional channels than the one-dimensional channels given by the quantum point contact. The reason is, in quantum Hall effect, you don't have any backscattering because backscattering is forbidden even though you have minor impurities or defects in the system but still the electrons cannot backscatter these edges cannot backscatter because those are because the magnetic field has broken the time reversal symmetry if there is a backscattering that has happened on the other edge this is forward moving this edge will be reverse moving backscattering backscattered electron need to go to this channel but this channel is too far because the bulk is insulating so these electrons cannot backscatter in the quantum hall regime that is why if you look at the quantum hall is going to give you a lot more perfect step like feature step step structure for conductance compared to the compared to a quantum point contact the quantum point contact the system is small, it's a microscopic system where quantum Hall affects the macroscopic system. But still, the condensation comes because of the microscopic edge channels. These edge channels are, are similar to the, of, are of the size of the magnetic length, Lb, which if you 
refer back the quantum Hall lecture there we have defined that so these edge states are separated by length lb that is a microscopic length scale but the system as a whole is macroscopic but here the system itself is microscopic so you can still expect some minor scattering from the potential edges or uh, sharp potential coming uh, you know teething potential from the gates or impurities around that can actually contribute backscattering some amount of backscattering which is responsible for you know uh, some of it's responsible for not having these steps exactly at e square wh as you change the gate voltage okay because when you change the gate voltage you are pulling this uh, you are opening the constriction and you have more and more scattering but still the system is in a regime where the transport happens to ballistic uh, through ballistic you know ballistically but you can still expect some amount of scattering that is what is causing these steps to be not as perfect as that in the quantum hall system that is exactly the reason the quantum hall effect is used for resistance standard standardization not the quantum point contact though quantum point contact is much easier to realize compared to quantum hall effect which also requires really high magnetic field but here the condensation is not as perfect as that of the quantum hall effect okay and secondly since even though there are scattering centers inside the sample in the sample for a quantum hall x quantum hall system but the magnetic field the quantizing field forbids any kind of backscattering so the quantization is a lot more stronger and you really don't require as perfect a sample as that for a qpc to see the quantization because the scattering the backscattering due to backscattering due to the impurities will be taken care of by the time reversal asymmetry of the magnetic field okay so so there are these are important you know conclusions and important points when you look at one would like to make when you look at these two systems both exhibit condensation in transport condensation conductors or condensation resistance but they are completely different physics to, or completely different mechanism to it. physics is same the equations are same completely different mechanism in one case you have propagating chiral edge state in other case you have streamlined flow of electrons through a constriction all right